All right, guys, welcome back. It is your girl, Charlene FX, your favorite female trader, back with this beginner's mini series. And on this mini series, we're going to be talking about identifying the trend. Identifying the trend seems to be something that's kind of difficult for some people to do. Uh, but I'm going to break it down for you guys super, super simple so you guys can be able to uh, use it to excel in your trading endeavors. All right. So really, really quickly, guys, we're going to talk about my favorite time frame to identify the trend on. And it's actually three time frames that I use to identify the trend, depending on what it is that I see on the charts. All right. One of my favorite time frames to use for identifying the trend is going to be the one hour time frame. Reason being is because the one hour time frame is a considered a high time frame um, confirmation for me, and it tells a lot. Believe it or not, it tells a lot in the, in the way of structure and in the way of the trend. Okay, because if you look here, all of these candles here are all one hour candles. So that means for an entire hour, the candles were moving in a certain direction and either pumping in a certain direction or kind of. Um, consolidating in a certain direction okay and believe it or not guys even when the market is consolidating it doesn't mean that it's not moving it's not trending whatever the case it's still trending to a certain degree uh just because you see the market kind of sitting on one area it doesn't necessarily mean that oh there's nothing happening you know we don't know if it's going to go up if it's going to go down technically you don't but for the most part there's always structure within structure okay now that's kind of an advanced topic i'm not going to get into that in, in this mini mini series but at some point i will but if you do want to learn more about it you can always jump into my course and the link for that is in the description box below now when you're identifying the trend you have to find a time frame that you're comfortable with identifying the trend and also it depends on the type of trader that you are being that i'm a scalper it's easy for me to find a trade just about on every time frame because i'm not catching a big move i'm catching small moves inside the markets now if you're catching bigger moves you obviously really want to focus on the higher time frames because that is going to be your bread and butter okay now if you're scalping like me which is mostly what my channel is based around which is scalping you pretty much can find it you can find a trade on any time frame but the trend uh not not necessarily you know the, the easiest thing to find all the time okay if you're an experienced trader, right? Yes, it could be very easy to find the trend. I have no issue finding trend. I can literally look at the market and within 2.5 seconds tell you what the overall trend is gonna be. How do you do that, Charlene? Like this, okay? You basically find a time frame that you're comfortable with trading and you identify the trend that's happening in that time frame. okay? So right now, literally with your eyes, you shouldn't even be able to, you shouldn't even need to do an actual markup to be able to tell what the trend is. You should be able to just look at the markets and see what where the market is going either it's going up it's going down or it's going sideways okay either way the market is moving it never stops moving it's always 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 moving even when the markets are closed for us to trade on the weekends it's still moving in the background because that's why whenever we come to the markets on sunday sunday night we see that the market either gapped or moved in a certain place and it, you know it didn't open at the same price that it closed at on a friday so that leads you to believe hey the market is always 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 moving okay with that being said identify your trend based on the time frame that you're comfortable with okay so let's say i decide to use the one hour or even the four hour time frame okay because my three favorites are going to be the one hour the four hour and the daily we're going to focus on the four and the one hour on this mini series okay reason being is because like I said, the one hour and the four hour are considered high time frame confirmations, and it tells a lot. Okay, if you see a candle or a structure maintaining a certain area for hours and hours and hours, that is a very big deal. Not to mention that is within a time frame where you could have found a trade. So it's not like you're looking at the one minute or the five minute or the 15 minute and you're base basing your trade off of every one minute, five minute or 15 minute or even 30 minute candle in an hour. On the 30 minute time frame, two candles makes an hour. On the 15 minute time frame, four. So there's a lot of wiggle room in there in an hour time frame for you to find a, a trade or identify at least a setup. Not necessarily a trade, but a setup. So if I'm looking for a potential setup, which would give me my trade at the end of the day, I'm going to look at the four hour or the one hour because, hmm, what happened inside each four hour candle? Each of these candles with a four hour time span that went by that formed that candle be it a wick a doji a long bullish candle a long bearish candle um doesn't matter what it looks like it took four hours for that specific candle to form 
So I have to ask myself, what happened in that candle, looking at it from the smaller picture and then expanding it to a bigger picture to ask myself, what's going on around this to make these candles form like this? So if the market is holding, let's say the four hour time frame here, I'm seeing the market hold this area right here. I'm gonna focus on this area. If I see the market holding right there, hmm, that means each of these candles were four hours. It took four hours each of these candles. So if I was to count all of these candles and multiply that by four, that's how many hours it took for the market to move from this area. If it took this long, all of these are four hour candles, four hour support holding at this area. That's a pretty strong area because a four hour candle is not a weak candle. That's a big high time frame candle. So if you have multiple four hour candles holding at this area, more than likely it ain't going to break more than likely it's going to go the opposite direction, which means you're going to give yourself a better chance of winning the trade. If you go with the trend, how do you find the trend here? Well, if you're scalping, even if you're intraday swing trading, whatever you want to look at the higher time frames. But if you're scalping and you see a setup like this, where you see the market was once holding it, it did it again right here. Market held right here for several hours, pushed up and it retested this area again, held again for several hours and then pushed up again pushed down, retested, held again, and then pushed up again. It's easy to see that the trend here is obviously bullish because at every point it makes a higher high and a higher low because the market held here, held a support, broke support, retested previous area of resistance, now acting as support, created a higher high, higher low, another support, and then another higher high. So you kind of have to correlate all those things together to be able to come up with it. But I don't need this markup to tell me the market was going bullish. I could just look at it and see that the market was going bullish. Now all I need to do is identify my areas of support. Because if I tell myself that the market is going bullish, immediately the next train of thought should be, I need to be looking for some areas of support. And that's where I need to be looking to take my trades. And vice versa, if the market was going bearish. Because here is the same, same example. I see here the market was holding an area of resistance here. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to see that, hey, the market is holding and these are all what? Four hour candles. Four, four, four. Four times three for 12 hours. We did break, but we didn't maintain. We rejected and came back down. Even more confirmation. I love long wicks. I love exhaustion candles. Because it tells me there's something up here that's forcing price back down. Every time the market tried to break here, something pushed it back down. Pushed up again, something forced it back down. Beautiful, excellent confirmation right there. Only one, two times did the market try to break before it did what? Went the opposite direction. So the market was bullish, but it found an area of resistance, a strong resistance. Why? Because we're on the four hour time frame, And now I could potentially look for a sell. Now, if I'm, I, now technically, right? If the market is flowing bullish here, you should still be looking for a buy. You should still be looking for a buy following structure. Because here, if how, how, do, how are buys maintained? Like this. Structure. You need your lows to be respected. The highs don't necessarily have to be broken, but your lows better be respected. If your lows get broken, like this one did here, if that low here gets broken, which was your last major low, before the market rejected and came back down. Now you have a break of structure because the market did what? Broke bearish, retested, and then continued, proceeded to create a lower low instead of a higher high. It's all about taking the big picture and simplifying it to a smaller picture. But the thing about it is, if you're scalping, you can look for a trade inside this area right here. If you're swing trading, intraday trading, now you got problems because you got to look at it from a, a bigger perspective. You can't look at it from the one, you know, the one hour, five minute, 15 minute time frame and look for a trade in there because you're not catching a small move. You're catching a bigger move. The type of trader that you are matters, guys. It matters how you trade, how you look at the markets, how you find your entries, how you find your setups. It matters. You have to be able to identify the trend and that is based off how you trade. Simple, easy peasy. Okay, these are quick beginner series. I know it seems like I might be talking about a lot, but if you really break it down, it really ain't that bad.
is simply looking for major areas where the market is either pumping up or pumping down. Then you're identifying your support and resistance zones, and then you're looking for your entries after that. But identifying the trend is going to be how you trade. Because if I'm identifying the trend here, and let's say I'm looking for a big move, most likely I want to be looking for the next higher low to be formed, which would be somewhere around here for me to take this move on up. And this would be my trade idea. That would be my trade idea, something like this. The trend is still bullish. Nothing here is telling me that the market is ready to go bearish yet. But if I'm scalping, now I got to simplify it. Now I got to drop down my lower time frames and identify the trend from looking at it from that point of view. Now you want to start out as a beginner identifying it from the bigger time frames because the bigger time frames is what kind of builds up the little. They kind of work hand in hand together. But if you can identify the higher time frame trend, it's going to be much easier for you to understand how to identify the lower time frame trend as well. Okay. Questions or comments, please rewatch the video uh, or leave a comment below in the uh, comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer questions for you guys. All of this stuff is heavily, heavily, heavily explained in my course. Obviously, I'm not going to give everything out on YouTube for free. You guys have to invest in your education and your time as well. It's not about just opening your wallet. You have to actually put in the chart time, guys, to understand what it is I'm talking about. These videos will give you a little jump start, a little boost to where you need to be. But for the most part, you got to put in that chart time. Okay. If you're interested in knowing which broker that I use, it's Hanko Trade. The link is in the description box below. No longer using MT4, MT5. We are using Act Trader which is a great platform that I use to trade US 30. Uh, yes, you can trade indices on there. I have an ECN account and the leverage is one to 500. If you're interested in uh, signing up for that, see the link in the description box below. If you're interested in my course as well, description box below. Don't get scammed guys. I get a lot of DMs of people getting scammed uh, from fakes, fake uh, pages of me, fake Facebook. Facebook has gone nuts lately with the scamming and you guys are falling for it. You know, people are DMing you, email, emailing you, uh, messaging you on Facebook, how your trading going. I will never solicit you guys, guys. I will never reach out and ask you how your trading is going. I don't care how your trading is going because I don't know you. So don't fall for it. Use common sense. Do your homework, do your due diligence on somebody. Don't just watch one YouTube video or get a message from somebody and then just follow that. My Instagram page is verified, okay? Understand that there's a lot, a lot, a lot of scams in every single industry, guys. Use your heads. Do not fall for the okie doke. And don't come looking for my real information after you gave the fake scammer your money. Because I'm not going to give you your money back and I'm not going to feel bad for you either. You're an adult. Use common sense. Don't get scammed. Do your homework on everything. All right? That's all I got for this video. As always, it's your favorite female trader, Charlene FX. And I'll see you guys on the next beginners mini masterclass. Peace and love. I'm out.